Hello guys, thanks for tuning in and welcome to another video. Today we will be playing the French tier 10 battleship Republique on the map Trap in the Domination game mode. But you're not going to see Republique gameplay only, I played this game in a 3 man division with two friends of mine. It's Garus Brutus in his Minotaur and Tiber66 in the Worcester. Both these dudes are fantastic players and I will be featuring Tiber66's gameplay as well and you will learn soon enough why I didn't choose to show you the gameplay of all three of us. Today's episode's title was inspired by a comment in chat during the game, but I was seriously considering to call it simply mistakes because you are going to see a lot of them. Now the first mistake already happened before the match started, it was actually clicking the battle button after midnight. Late night games tend to be kind of erratic and the actions of your teammates and the enemy players are often even more unpredictable and mind boggling than during the day. Mistake number two will basically be my entire gameplay. I was already really tired when the match started and it will definitely show. As always I will try to address my mistakes and if possible explain to you what I could have done better or differently. But since I'm not a good BB player I probably won't catch all of them so I ask you to go easy on me in advance. In the end though I figured a title like Mistakes would be a little bit too generic. After all, World of Warships is all about exploiting your enemy's mistakes and trying to make as few mistakes as possible yourself and despite our best efforts we all make mistakes all the time when playing the game. Some players only make minor mistakes, other players make major ones, regardless they keep us on our toes and essentially make the game what it is. Now before we go into the match, let's quickly review my commander build and my upgrades on the Republique. At that time I was using Deadeye, but since the skill will be gone soon, I'll show you what I will be running instead. The one and only difference is that I'm going to replace Deadeye with Fire Prevention, which I mostly stopped using on my BBs after the introduction of the new commander skills. I know some way bigger YouTubers always recommended fire prevention over Superintendent in the Dead Eye meta, but I always found that if I repaired two or more fires and was set on two or more fires again immediately after my damage control party ran out, my positioning was simply poor and I probably deserved to die because I would have been set on multiple fires again one way or another even with fire prevention. From my point of view the additional heal paired with smart positioning was more valuable for me during longer matches most of the time, but take this with a grain of salt since I'm far from being the best BB player. But yeah, these considerations will be irrelevant very soon anyway because with the removal of Dead Eye, we will be back at running full tank builds for most BBs. Personally I don't see any use for the new skill Swift and Silence, maybe if Wargaming removes the condition that you have to be undetected to activate it. It could be interesting to run on slower BBs and meme worthy on fast battleships like Georgia or the French BBs and it wouldn't be the first 4 pointer in the game that gives an unconditional buff, but the way they are planning to implement it, it's a waste of points in my opinion. So after a few disappointing opening salvos on that Donskoy, let's switch to Tiber's view and also have a look at his commander and his upgrades. It's an interesting build and not the one I would personally use, but in terms of performance and the Worcester, Tiber is slightly ahead, so in spite of some unusual choices like Expert, AA, Marksman and Radio Location and also Steering Gears Modification 1 instead of Propulsion Modification 1, he can definitely make this build work. I talked about this build with him and he told me that he's using radio location for instance because it allows him to play in a more autonomous way which makes perfect sense to me. Right now he's busy firing the enemy FTG, our team is pushing Alpha really hard which is definitely the right call considering our numerical advantage there but there's some kind of situation involving here. 
The enemy Petro Pavlovsk is taking up a really aggressive stance at Alpha in spite of being heavily outnumbered and this position could actually work out for the Russian cruiser if it wasn't for me. I was dragging behind my cruiser diffmates intentionally to take some unfortunately unsuccessful pot shots at potential targets in the middle, but also because it looked like the enemy presence at Alpha was rather weak, so I didn't want to go behind that island in the cap like the majority of our ships. The Petropavlos covered her approach pretty well, but once I had turned around my ship fully, I was easily able to take care of her. Unfortunately, not before we lost Garrus Brutus in his Minotaur, we didn't communicate properly and failed to realize that the Petro was looking his way, so we traded one tier 10 cruiser for another. After killing the Petro, I came under quite some focus fire and wanted to go dark, so I waited almost the entire duration of my detectability penalty due to firing my main guns and decided to extinguish a single fire. My timing was pretty much perfect and with the Akitsuki behind an island I was certain I would go dark before being set on fire again. If only, well, if only there wasn't a Stalingrad in Bravo. Stalingrad, as we all know, one of the stealthiest cruisers in the game. No wonder I didn't see her. You can tell by my camera movement how confused I was. And when I finally realized what was going on, I was already set on fire again and chunked quite hard by multiple enemies. So this is definitely a moment where I could have died outright being HE spammed by two cruisers and a DD with a Stalingrad in my sight and my damage control as well as my repair party on cooldown. I consider myself very lucky that the enemies got only one permafire on me. The Stalingrad however is pretty badly overextended herself. Right now she is being chased by a vanguard in the middle of Bravo and while she is distracted I'm trying to apply as much damage to her as possible. I'm aiming for the upper part of her nose because that's easily being overmatched by almost any BB. But Republique's dispersion makes it difficult to deal damage reliably at times. Right now we are seeing one of the strongest commander abilities in the game in action. Fortunately not even Kuznetsov's very balanced will for victory talent is able to save the Soviet supercruiser because she finally attracted the attention of the majority of my team that's still chilling in alpha. I could have picked up the kill myself if it had not been for my potato aim but oh well that way Tiber secures kill number 3 for our division. It's about time that my team leaves Alpha. We only have two Angels left in the north who will get overrun eventually and we are already down on ships, caps and points. As long as my reinforcements have not arrived I can't contest Bravo on my own since there is still the Akitsuki around and I have no way of spotting her. As long as if the enemies are busy dislodging our air gears, I plan to stay roughly at the same spot cause I might get some juicy broadsides to shoot at. We don't talk about that salvo on the Alabama. She changed her course slightly but I must have clearly mistaken her for a Henry IV. Let us have a look at Tiber66 instead. I was begging him on Discord for assistance at Bravo and he's coming at full speed but not without harassing the Yoshino that also made her way into the Bravo cap and finally caught my attention as well. My aim is letting me down as I'm tired and aware of the fact that this game will not be a walk in the park and once again it's Tiber who is picking up the kill. The Akitsuki gets spotted and Tiber opens up on her. Meanwhile I'm trying to help my air gears with the Ohio but it's too little too late while dealing with the air gear closer to her. The Ohio refuses to show me enough broadside to punish her severely and eventually we will lose both our German supercruisers without getting any kills in return. A lot of underwhelming shots fired at the American BB so far but by the looks of it we might be able to get at least one clean salvo on her broadside before she makes it into cover behind the island. I don't know if she was initially planning to go that way or the engagement with the air gear forced her to, but maybe we get a good salvo this time since she's basically as broad as she can be. But nope, half my salvo clips into the island and all I get is one overpen.
We lose our Italian and Bravo and the remaining Aegir and Charlie in quick succession, which turns the game into a 4 vs 7. Unfortunately, Taiba can't go into Bravo now because it's occupied by the Ohio. I'm taking some very long range shots at the enemy key, which is still almost completely untouched, but I'm not counting on any meaningful damage here, especially with my questionable aiming abilities during that night in mind. I briefly went undetected after my concealment penalty for firing my main guns expired, but the fact that I'm detected again tells me that the Akitsuki made her way around the islands and she makes her presence undoubtedly known by firing in the open. I was briefly considering shooting at her, but I noticed that she slowed down and was about to smoke up, so with only my front turret being available and the Ohio coming around the corner, I figure it's better to hold my fire for two reasons. First, for the sake of probably one or two overpens, I would have been farmed for the entire duration of my gun bloom. And second, with holding my fire, I keep a tiny little element of surprise regarding the Ohio, because when I was spotted the last time, I was not yet fully committed towards Bravo. We catch the Ohio apparently by surprise. I can't tell if my little mind game worked or the guy simply plays without the minimap. Regardless, we finally get a citadel and are already perfectly angled before the Ohio can return fire. In the meantime, Tybro managed to sneak up to the Akitsuki and caught her deep within his radar range. We planned and executed this maneuver pretty flawlessly and I was really happy about the outcome. After taking two citadel hits, the Ohio starts to angle at last, but now she already took too much damage and it will take me only a few more salvos to sink her. However, Taiba is in trouble because he's stuck bow in versus the Alabama and the Prince Eugen. He was only three seconds away from going dark and being able to turn around in relative safety after killing the Akitsuki, but decided to shoot again before he made his turn and the Eugen punishes him hard with a properly placed AP salvo. He stays alive though and to be fair I re-watched that part a couple of times. The Alabama was essentially already too close and would have detected him in the middle of the turn either way, so he only pre-pawned the inevitable and in the end even timed it in a fashion that only the German cruiser had his broadside while the American BB was still reloading. Once committed, it appears Tiber can't refrain from shooting his guns, but he stops shooting as soon as he realizes that the very healthy Kurfürst in the back is shooting him as well. I can't lose Tiber and I was hoping to provide some relief for him by taking out the Eugen, but if I can count on two things in World of Warships, then it's horrible dispersion and my terrible aim, or both, especially in dire situations, and the game is not letting me down. With the Eugen disappearing behind an island, our priority is now the Alabama, but I need to get a better angle in order to damage her significantly. Taiba waited for the Alabama to shoot before he opens up again. It's a risky move considering his HP pool, but we need kills quickly before we run out of points. Still, I would have preferred if he had healed up prior to engaging, but it is what it is. Luckily, he seems to be kind of invisible for the Alabama, I mean she clearly notices him, but apparently her earlier salvos paired with Tiber's dodging skills frustrated her so much that she prefers to shoot an angled BB instead of a low health cruiser. Speaking of angles, I finally got a proper angle on the Alabama myself and I am able to finish her and at the same time our Iowa manages to kill the enemy Donskoy, which she chased deep into her spawn. So this is the first time my team is not behind on ships, but our opponents still have a comfortable point lead. Tiber, however, still needs to recover from the fight with the Alabama and the Eugen. I'm using my second last heal here in anticipation of the deciding engagements that are about to happen. The salvo on the broadside key that was pressed against an island yields once again only disappointing results, but now it's finally time to get into Bravo. The GK gets spotted and I'm really not interested in closing the distance. GK's secondaries can penetrate Republique's armor basically almost anywhere, so I want to avoid a close quarters fight at all costs and the two kills bought us some time to play this smart. 
With the key shooting HE at me, I figure it's a good time to get into a kiting position once again. The Kurfürst will only get one salvo on my broadside until I'm angled away again. And I was also concerned that the Eugen was waiting for me behind the island at the edge of the cap circle ready to dump some torpedoes once I had closed the distance. Tiber revealed the German cruiser which indeed seemed to be waiting for me, but the Eugen sealed her fate by not turning away in time. Once she's exposed to Worcester's fast firing 6 inch guns in a 1 vs 1, she's melting rapidly with her AP mostly bouncing harmlessly on Tiber's hull. In the meantime, the GK didn't insist on chasing me, I don't know if I should consider myself lucky or unfortunate, because on the one hand I won't bleed more HP for now, but on the other hand I won't get to farm her from a safe distance and instead Tiber has to deal with her now because she's coming his way. We lost our Moskva and GK's secondaries did briefly set me on fire, but I didn't hesitate to repair the single fire immediately because it was obvious that I wouldn't be spotted again anytime soon with both remaining enemy ships behind islands. Tiber is spotting the Kurfürst for me and I will get the opportunity to fire a few salvos while being undetected, but it's kind of difficult to line up my shots without a proper line of sight and especially considering my horrible aim that was plaguing me all night. I remember the three of us were discussing on Discord how we were going to do this and I think we came to the conclusion that I needed to intercept the coup first by leaving Bravo through that little gap in front of me to force a quick and decisive fight at extremely close range without being exposed to her secondaries over a prolonged period of time. Tiber had been turning his ship around and was holding his fire until he got the impression that the GK was sufficiently distracted. Of course the GK is shooting him while she has nothing else to shoot at, but Tiber is already angled pretty much perfectly, so the Kurfürst will only get a few overpens and maybe one pen later on. Still it's a Kurfürst and she eats light cruisers for breakfast at close range. And although Tiber is kiting, her main caliber is big enough to overmatch Worcester easily, so I need to hurry to attract the attention of the German battleship before Tiber takes significant damage. My intercept course was spoiled by the key spotting me and the GK also has Hydro active. But now I'm committed, even if that means showing broadside to the key while the Kurfürst is trying to run away. In expectation of taking a couple of big hits from the key, I burned through my last heal maybe a little bit prematurely and while I'm catching up with the German behemoth, I'm trying to retaliate versus the Japanese BB with moderate success. Tiber is doing his best to deal as much damage to the crew first as he can, but at this point he also made use of his last repair party and with GK's unpredictable dispersion, he might be only one salvo away from imminent death. Going this way did cost me a lot of HP and I don't know if it was the correct choice, but we finally made it, we have the Kufers directly in front of us. Our health pools are very similar, but the German BB has three people targeting her and although the key managed to sneak in one last nasty salvo on me, the Großer Kurfürst is defeated at last. Now only the key is left right around the corner and in retrospect I've been thinking about the possibility of the Japanese BB winning this. If only she ran away instead of charging in, but I suppose the enemy point lead shrank too much already and we would have been able to block Charlie if not cap it outright in time. Key walks out of cover completely broadside, I don't know why, because her torpedoes are already in the water. So we take advantage of her absence of angling and let's see, can we kill her before she kills us? Yes, kill number 10 for our so called deadly division and yeah, that was a pretty good game I have to say. A lot of back and forth, plenty of exciting engagements. Although I'm still under the impression that things only got so tight because I wasn't really in control of myself. But hey, I hope it made at least for an entertaining video. Unfortunately I don't have the scorecards of Tiber 66 but big shout out to this dude, very nice carry. I'm kind of thankful that Garrus got taken out so early, no offense man, but there's no way this game would have become this close with you being alive for the entire match.
That's it for today guys, let me know what you think about the split screen format in the comments. I know it's unwatchable on mobile, but editing this episode was a mess. And I would really appreciate it if you hit the like button in case you've enjoyed it. Thanks for watching, as always consider subscribing if you want to see more of my content. I hope to catch you next time, see you soon and take care. But maybe we get a good salvo this time. This time. The Eugen punishes, punishes. The Eugen punishes him hard to her spawn. So this is a little, 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 a little,